Okay, so exploring the graphs of polynomial functions, right? So the unity is polynomial functions. It kind of fits in, uh, where does it fit in? Okay, down here. Graphs of polynomial functions, characteristics of them, and modeling polynomial functions. So today we're going to look at the graphs of polynomial functions and figure out the characteristics, right? What can we tell from the equation, or what can we tell from the graph? How do we describe this thing? And we're going to have a number of ways to describe this thing. So Naomi researched polynomial functions. She's learned they've been used for hundreds or thousands of years, They're appreciated for their simplicity. They only contain the operations of multiplication and addition. Okay, so we're going to look at some specific polynomial functions. So polynomial functions. So let's start with a constant function. And it's of the form y equals k, where k is some constant. So let's take a look at the graph of that by going here. So this is a graphing program called desmos.com, D-E-S-M-O-S. -E uh, it's online. Very handy thing to have if you want to, you know, play around with graphs and that. It's nicer than your graphing calculator. Although, having said that, you still do have to uh, know how to use your graphing calculator because that's what you're going to have on hand when you uh, are writing the exam. Okay, so. So I'm going to put in this y equals k. And hit enter, and it's not going to like that. So hang on. Let's go with y equals a. Hmm. Hang on, I'm just going to refresh this. Now. Just because I was playing with it earlier, so. We'll give it a moment. So there is a constant function. Okay, hang on. Now, and I can move it, see? So as the value changes, so what, what's going on with this function? What kind of line is it? Great line. Like if you looked out far away, you would see the horizon. It's a horizontal line. Right? So you're going to get a horizontal line. Okay, and if it's positive, um, if it's positive, it's up above, and if it's negative, it's down below. And so we've got to come up with, well, how are we going to describe these things, these polynomial functions, this being the very simplest, right? I mean, there's nothing there, it's just a horizontal line. Uh, oh, well, give me a little gap in the recording. Sorry for the gap. Okay, y-intercepts, how many? Okay, one y-intercept, right? One y-intercept. Yeah. There is one, and it is k, right? Whatever the number is. So if you're graphing y equals 5, there's one y-intercept and 5. If you're graphing y equals negative 5, there's one y-intercept, and it's negative 5. Okay. X-intercepts, y-intercepts. The end behavior. End behavior. So when we talk about end behavior, we're talking about what does the graph do as it goes from left to right? And, hang on, I want to go back to the book for a sec. So then a lot of terms are defined here, right? It's talking about end behavior. So that's referred to here. So this is in the text. And on the left-hand side in the margin, you get to see some notes, right? So we talk about, now this is degree one. We're going to get to degree one in a minute. But So number of x-intercepts for degree one, we'll play with that. End behavior. End behavior. The description of the shape of the graph from left to right on the coordinate plane. Coordinate plane. 
Cartesian grids are divided into four quadrants. So you guys know this, right? You've taken the Cartesian plane, right? But here's a little reminder. Cartesian grids are divided into four quadrants by the x-axis and the y-axis. Quadrants are identified using Roman numerals from one to four. Roman numerals, I, 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 B. Starting from the top right and progressing counterclockwise. So one, two, three, four. Okay, so this horizontal line is going from... So which quadrant is it starting in and which quadrant is it going to? So from two to one... or three to four, okay? So we're gonna write that down under end behavior. So Q2 to Q1, or Q3 to Q4. The end behavior of constant function. That's what it does. Um, Domain and range. So the domain, what's the domain for a constant function? That involves x's. What can we say about the x's for this function? X belongs to the reals. And what can we say about the y's? So the range is y is equal to k, right? There's only one value for y. So the range has one value. Domain is all real numbers. Now, here's a hint. All polynomial functions have a domain of what? Real numbers, okay? So anything in polynomials, domain, always real numbers. Unless we're doing a specific example, right? You kick a soccer ball and it travels for a certain amount of time, then you restrict the domain because we're talking about a specific situation, right? Then we can say, well, it goes from zero to four seconds or something. That's the amount of time the ball was in the air. And the height would go from zero to however high it got, right? As opposed to a range that was beyond that. Okay, so that's a constant. Now we're gonna look at degree one. Okay, so degree one functions, here's the, an, you know, the answers are here, but we're still going to just uh, put that down for ourselves. But let's go look at degree one function. So I'm going to kill that, and we'll type in degree one. So y equals mx plus b. So that's what you used to see, right? y equals mx plus b, the equation of a straight line. Okay, and that, that's what a linear function is, right? So it's of degree 1 because there's an exponent of 1, right? x to the power of 1, right? Quadratic, you'd have x squared, cubic, x cubed, and so on. All right, so this line has a slope of 1. I'm just going to back this off to 0. 0, come on. Negative point 0.1. Zero. Boom. So that's the line y equals x. Okay, I'm going to play with the b value. Actually, I'm going to let it play with the b value. Play. So, b value is changing. What's going on? How is it moving? It's moving. Huh. Left, right, up, down. Take your choice. Either one. It's actually moving up and down, right? Because the, the B value is what? What's the value of B? It's the, so take a look, you know, when B, what's the value of B now, now, now? Okay. The value of B is the y-intercept, right? So that's the y-intercept. Okay. So, let's go off. Pause. No, don't play again. Move you back. Okay. Back to zero. I only want to change one thing at a time. Get rid of that. Okay. So, let's play with them. So what is M? Oops. What's M changing? It's 
the line's not really changing shape, right? I mean, it's hard to tell because it's a line. What is M? You know what it is. It's the... Starts with an S and ends with a lope. It's the slope of the line, right? I don't know, all the way back to 10 feet. So that's the slope of the line. Okay. I'll come down a little and pause it. All right. I this over here. It's a straight line. It has uh, how many x-intercepts? So if I move this, the thing's going to affect x-intercepts. How many x-intercepts? One. There's only one x-intercept. We're not going to ask what it is. And then it's got this slope. So let's go here. So we have a linear function. And let's go back here, constant function. We'll just say this is of degree zero. Okay. Degree zero. Because there's if there's an x there, it's x to the power of zero, right? Anything to the power of zero is one. So there's no x there. We say it's of degree zero or a constant function. Linear function is of degree one. Okay, and what were we doing? We were looking at x-intercepts, y-intercepts, the end behavior, the domain, and the range. Okay, so x-intercepts. So in this case, we're not going to give the x-intercept, but we're going to say how many. So how many x-intercepts? There's one x-intercept. Will there always be one x-intercept? Does there have to be one? Okay, before you answer that, let's do a y-intercept. How many y-intercepts? How many? Your number between 0 and 2, not including 0 or 2. No? Nobody? Okay. How many y-intercepts? Oh my god, this one. one. One, thank you. Say it out loud, Sam. You've got to say it me. How many? There is one y-intercept, right? And what is it? It's B. I'm not even asking anymore. Just tell me. Okay. There's one y-intercept. It's the value of B. Okay? So if you have a constant function, y equals mx plus B, the m is the slope. We don't care about that. We did enough of that in grade 10, right? We're not interested. We want characteristics, right? Characteristics are x-intercepts. How many? And I might ask you, if I give you a specific function, I can ask you what the x-intercept is, right? You can plot it in your calculator. You can find the x-intercept. If I give you a specific function, I can ask you how many y-intercepts and what it is, okay? Now, when we move on to quadratics, stuff changes around, right? And without graphing, you could say, well, possibly there's this many, right? There could be this many, or this many, or this many, right? And again, so we're just doing characteristics. If it's some function, you don't have graphic calculator, you can't graph it, you just say, well, there could be this, this, or this, right? And that's what I'm interested in. Do you know the characteristics that there could be? In this case, there must be one x-intercept, and there must be one y-intercept. And the reason that is so is because the next thing we look at is end behavior. So what is the end behavior? Let's go look at the graph. What is the end behavior of this? Let's go three to one. We should name them properly. One is in the upper right. Okay. One, one, two, three, four. So it's going from Quadrant 3 to quadrant 1. What is the end behavior here? 2 to 4. Okay, so it's going quadrant 2 to quadrant 4. So either, and it's one up, it can't be both at the same time. Either Q3 to Q1 or Q2 to Q4. 
Now, if that's what we're going to do, in order to go from quadrant three to quadrant one, however this is, I'm going to have to pass through the x-axis once, and I'm going to have to pass through the y-axis once. Right? Even if it's here, that's still passing through both axes. So I have to. And if I'm going this way, I'm still going to have to pass through both axes, right? There. No matter how I do it. Okay. And even if you say, well, oh, it's not in quadrant two anymore. It is, right? Because it's still going up to the left, so it's still going to go into quadrant two. Okay. No matter how steep. Unless, you know, we make the slope zero. In which case, whoops, slope. Unless we make the slope zero. In which case, what kind of line is it? Then it's a constant function, right? Because we took out the x. We make the slope zero. It's no longer linear. Now it's a constant function. It's just, you know, that's the y-intercept, blah, blah, right? Okay, so we don't do that. Because this is no longer a... Uh, no longer a linear function. All right. So that is, and then domain. What's the domain? And what's the range? Range? Any real number, right? Has to be, because it's going from either the lower left quadrant to the upper right quadrant, and it goes forever in both directions. So it's going to have to cover all possible values that y can cover, right? So it's a member of the real, element of the real. Next. Right here. New page. Next. All right, so here's Naomi's thing. She did this graph. Functions are number of x-intercepts, number of y-intercepts, and behavior. So Q3 to Q1, Q2 to Q4, domain and range. A little more formally stated. Uh, then use graphing software to best characteristics of quadratic and cubic. Okay, so what is a cubic? We're going to do quadratic first, but cubic function. Right, again, anything in green in the body of the text will be mentioned, defined over here. A polynomial function of the third degree whose greatest exponent is 3. For example, 5x cubed plus x squared minus 4x plus 1. Okay, first, we're going to do quadratics. Right? We're going to look at the same thing. Number of x-intercepts, number of y-intercepts, or, or the y-intercept. Right? In a polynomial function, the y-intercept is very easy to find. Right? What's the y-intercept for this? 1. Because what do you do? To get the y-intercept, you set x to 0. If I make x 0, that takes out all of these guys, right? And all you're left with is the constant. So in any polynomial function, the y-intercept is the constant, right? Degree 0, degree 1, degree 2, degree 3, any of them. Okay, so quadratics. Let's go look at quadratics. And we'll do that here. So quadratic function. It is of the form ax squared plus bx plus c. Y e whoops, there'll be somewhere I could type. Y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And Let's make that zero. And let's make that zero. <clears throat> okay, here's your everyday quadratic, right? You saw this a million times in your 20 course. Quadratic function. This one is just y equals x squared. Okay? So it's got that characteristic. If you move one unit away from the vertex, you go up one because one squared. If you go two units away, two squared is four. Three units away, that'll be a nine. Nine. Okay, so up there, three and nine. Go one unit to the left, again, one, two, four, three, nine. Okay. That's your basic function. Um, what's its end behavior? The end behavior of this guy? Quadrant two to quadrant one. Yes. 
What's its end behavior? Three to four. So if it opens up, it's quadrant two to quadrant one. And notice this just changes the shape, right? It makes it narrow, it's a vertical stretch. But when A changes to negative, then it reflects in the x-axis and it opens down. Okay, uh, so let's just write end behavior here. Leave some space, right? What do we got? X-intercepts? Y-intercept? What is the Y-intercept? C, right? How many Y-intercepts? One Y-intercept? And it's Y equals C. Okay, end behavior. So what do we say? Quadrant 2 to quadrant 1. So remember, when we talk end behavior, we're saying as you go from left to right. Where do you start? Quadrant 2. And you're going to start in one of three or four, right? And none of these will you, you know, they always start in three or four, or sorry, two or four, and they always end in one or three. So this quadrant 2 to quadrant 1, or Q3 to Q4. Now remember, I can ask you for the number of intercepts or what the intercept is, right? In this case, it's the number of intercepts. There's one y-intercept, and what is it? It's y equals c. Now that's easy to do, right? Because it's just staring you in the face. y is equal to c, right? You just set x equal to 0. Even if you're given it in uh, vertex form, then set x equal to 0 and work it out, and you'll work out the y-value. X-intercept. So let's go back here and let's talk about how many x-intercepts. Let me just change this. Let's go back to one. One. How many x-intercepts now? None. How many x-intercepts now? And now? Two. So how many x-intercepts can you possibly have? Two, four, one, or none. Right? Look, there's none. Now there's one. Now there's two. Right? So you can have two x-intercepts, or one x-intercept, or no x-intercept. Now if I play with B, then other stuff is going to happen. We're not responsible for knowing. We're responsible for knowing what happens with A. Okay, can I drag that this way? Okay, how many x-intercepts? Two. No, none, no. Probably never going to get that. Whatever. And if I pull it down just a little bit more. Okay, let's flip it over. How many x-intercepts? Two. Then one, then none. Okay. What are the characteristics for the x-intercepts? Well, if it opens down, then what does C have to be in order to have two x-intercepts? So if it's opening down, right? A value. I could set B back to zero. Make life easier. Okay, so it opens down. In order to have two x-intercepts, the c value must be greater than zero. If c is equal to zero, how many x-intercepts? It would be one. And if c is less than zero, then none. And if we flip it, then what does c have? So if it opens up, what does c have to be in order to have no x-intercepts? So Opens, it opens up, I want no x-intercept, c must be greater than 0. If c is equal to 0, we're going to have what? 1x-intercept. Let's try that out. 0. Okay, 1x-intercept. And if c is negative, then we have 2x-intercepts. Okay. So if you're looking for the number of x-intercepts, 
you're looking at the characteristics of this quadratic. Right? You're going to say, does it open up or does it open down? If it opens up and C is positive, then it's doing this, but it's been moved up, so there's no x-intercept. If it opens up and C is 0, there's one x-intercept. I might not ask you for the x-intercept, and I may ask you just, here's the quadratic. How many possible x-intercepts, right? So you're going to say there are 0, 1, 4, 2 x-intercepts. Okay. So if I say, what is the possible number of x-intercepts for a quadratic? You'll say that possibly 0, 1, or 2. If I give you a specific quadratic and say, how many x-intercepts, then I want to know, right? Is it 0? You can't say 0, 1, or 2, right? You have to then say there are 0 or there are 2. Now, you could graph it, look at your graph and, and figure it out, but what's an easier way? Say it opens up and it's been moved up. Okay. Now, the b-value can mess with you. That's the only problem, right? You notice when I changed the b-value, it started moving down. So, in that case, you might have to. But if I just gave you an ax squared plus c, then you can tell me for sure. Okay. If there's a b in there, you pretty much have to graph it if you want to figure out how many x-intercepts. Okay. And you're not responsible for doing, hey, if b is positive, then it does this, and if it's negative, it does that, right? We don't care about that. Again, it's characteristics. Uh, what else was there? Domain. What is the domain? And what's the range? All right, so let's do a couple of ranges, right? Let's do a couple of things. So range. If it opens up, then y is greater than or equal to the minimum value. Okay. So if it opens up, got a vertex. It's opening up. All the values are greater than whatever the y-coordinate of the vertex is. And if it opens down, then what? y is going to be less than or equal to the maximum value. Okay. So a quadratic, degree 2, opens up or down, right? That's why we get this end behavior. Q2 to Q1, that's opening up. Q3 to Q4, that's opening down. Okay. What about it? Well, range depends on uh, which way it's open. Okay, cubic. Let's try this one just for the heck of it. 5x cubed plus x squared minus 4x plus 1. Square, square, square. Okay, y equals y equals five x cubed. What was the next one minus four x squared or plus x squared minus four x plus one plus x squared minus four x plus one. Okay, there's a cubic. Give me another cubic. Let's see. What is what is a, what is just a regular cubic look like, right? What if it's just y equals x cubed? Okay, so there it is in black. That's y equals x cubed. So y equals x cubed starts where? So quadrant three to quadrant one. Now, what if I change that? What if I make that negative x cubed? Then where does it go? 2 to 4. So it's q, q3 uh, to q1 or q2 to q4. Okay. Have we seen that before? This one? No. This one? Uh, q3 to q1 or q2 to q4. Huh. Go back here. Let's throw in y equals x. And let's throw in one more. y equals negative x. So negative x cubed, negative x cubed, that's the black one here, right? Negative x cubed has the same end behavior 
as y equals negative x. That's going to hold true for every odd degree polynomial, right? So every odd degree polynomial is going to be q2, sorry, q3 to q1, right? Or in this case, if the a value is positive, and if the a value is negative, it's going to be q2 to q4. Right? There's the negative one of the cubic, there's the negative linear, here's the positive linear, and here's the positive cubic. Okay? That's kind of interesting. That, that that holds for odd degree. Okay, so cubic. So what's the equation look like? Well, it's like y equals ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. So this time we just we add a term in front. We got a cube term and then a squared term and then a linear term and our uh, yeah linear term and then a constant term. Okay, you don't need all of them, right? If I just do ax cubed, then b, c, and d are zero, right? You're just looking at y equals x cubed. Okay, x intersect. Now, we're not going to be able to tell what the x-intercepts are, but we can tell how many there are. So let's just hide some stuff. Uh, okay. How many x-intercepts? Three. If I were to move this up just a smidge so that this was there, how many x-intercepts would there be? There'd be two, right? If I were to move it further up, how many x-intercepts would there be? One. So how many x-intercepts are possible? One or two or three. Not zero though, right? Because remember, it's like the linear. You have to go through. Because if you're going from down here to up there, or up here to down there, you have to pass the x-axis. Quadratic, you don't, right? Because you're going to turn and head back up again. Okay. So x-intercepts are... 0, or 1, or 2. Right. 1, or 2. That's why you guys are in the audience. Make sure this comes up good. X intercepts are 1, or 2, or 3. Right. Can't have 0. If you just finished explaining, you can't have 0. Then you wrote 0. Y intercept, how many? And it is D, right? How do you get the y intercept? You set x equal to 0, right? That's gone, that's gone, that's gone. You're just left with y equals D. So any polynomial, I give you an actual equation and say, hey, what's the y intercept, right? It's no brainer, right? You just write down whatever the constant term is, right? Uh, if I ask you the number of possible x intercepts, then you got to remember, well, a cubic can have one or two or three. A quadratic could have zero or one or two. A linear has one, period, paragraph, not possible, it just it has one. Um, okay, x-intercept, y-intercept, what was next? End behavior. So we said, well, the end behavior is the same as the linear, right? It's an odd degree. And that was, what, q3 to q1? or q2 to q4. Domain? And the range, what's the range? You're going from way down there to way up there, what's your range? Element of the real, right? Y belongs to the real. Okay, same as linear, same as linear, same as linear, same as linear, except it's not D, it's K, whatever. Right? But these guys are all the same, right? Linear. So any odd degree function has these characteristics, right? There is one Y intercept, and it's you know equal to the constant. That also is quadratic. Okay, every polynomial has this characteristic, the Y intercept. There's one of them, and it is the value of the constant. Um, odd have this end behavior, q3 to q1 or q2 to q4. 
domain of real and a range of real. Even, okay, now let's just look at a fourth degree. So to make this a fourth degree, so I'm going to take this, I'm just going to stick something in front. Okay, let's just try x to the fourth plus. Okay, now it's probably, whoops, adjust this a bit. Okay, like somewhere down here it's turning around, right? Like you're heading down and it's turning around. So here's the fourth degree. What's its end behavior? Two to one. What's its end behavior? Three to four. That's just like the quadratic, right? Same thing. This is going to be true of every even degree polynomial, right? And you're not really responsible for quadratic. You are minorly. You're not going to see a quadratic on the diploma or anything, but you do have to know some characteristic. There's one characteristic we've left out we haven't discussed yet, and we will do that in a moment. Um, how many x-intercepts? Three. If I move it down the smidge, how many x-intercepts? One, two. So if we, if we did this, right, then it would be one, two, three, four. So there could be three, there could be four. If I move it up a little bit, there will be two. Okay. If I moved the whole thing down a bunch, so that this point here just touched, how many x-intercepts? And if I kept moving it down, zero. zero. Good. More responsive is the afternoon work. So there could be zero x-intercept, or one, or two, or three, or four. Now, you notice with the quadratic, it was zero, or one, or two. So if it's even, we can have anywhere from zero up to the degree, right? So zero to four, zero to two. If it's odd, then for linear, we have one. And for uh, a cubic, it was one, or two, or three. Okay. Again, you, so you're up to the degree, really, right? So if it's linear, it's degree one, you go up to the degree. What you can't have with odd is you can't have zero. Okay. So with even, you can have zero. Why? Because it opens down or it opens up. So it doesn't have to cross the x-axis. With odd, it has to because it's going from one corner to the other corner. So it has to cross the x-axis at least in one place. Okay. It can't do zero, but it can do one or two or three, depending on... The next thing, which is the number of turning points. So here's the thing. How many times does this graph turn or change direction, right? So there's one there, right? It was going up, now it's going down. That's a turning point. It's going down, now it's going up. That's a turning point. So we've got one, two. It goes up, and it's going to come back down. How many turning points does this have? Three. Okay. Now, this could... Let's just get rid of that. Y, whoops. Y equals x squared. How many turning points in y equals x squared? One. Right. And there will always be one. And there will only be one. You can't have two, because if it turns again, it's going to be a cubic, right? So if it turned again, it would be doing this, then it would have to turn again. That's a cubic. So how many turning points does a cubic have? Okay, this one does have two. So a quadratic must have one. If we did this, uh, there's y equals x to the fourth. Right? It's the kind of greeny one in here. How many turning points does it have? One. Okay. It's got to have one because it's got to turn around. It could have, could it have two? So it's got one, could it have two? No, because then it would be a cubic, right? So it's got one or it's going to have to have three, right? Because if it turns once and then turns again, now it's heading in the opposite direction. We know it's got to go back up, so it's got to turn again. So the, the maximum number of turning points is one less than the degree. 
right? one less than the degree, right? So if it's degree four, it can turn three times. Right, it can't turn four times, it would be heading back in, right? If it turned four times, we got one, two, three, four, and then it's heading down, it can't do that, right? That would be a fifth degree. So the maximum number of turning points is equal, is one less than the degree. So squared, one less than the degree is one, it can only have one turning point, and it must have one turning point, okay? Now, if we look at a cubic, How many turning points does this have? Let's just get rid of these guys. How many times does it turn? Just go. Got none. It's not turning, right? It's just it's just kind of yeah, veering a little bit, but it's not turning, right? It didn't actually change direction. If you're driving, you didn't actually do this because you're turning around. You just did this, right? If you're on a motorcycle and you leaned and then you came back. So that zero turning point. Could a cubic have one turning point? So here's my cubic, I got one turning point. Yeah, that's a quadratic, right? Because it's going down. So it's got zero, or it's going to have how many? Two, right? Because it's got to change direction once, but if it keeps going down, that would be even degree, so it's got to change direction again. Okay? So you just need to keep that in mind, and that would be the number of turning points. So if we go into here, so we played with quadratics and cubics now. Uh, how's possible number x intercepts related to the degree? So we said it was equal to, right? So you could have as many turning points, or sorry, as many x intercepts as the degree. Um, now it claims that all polynomial functions of degree one, two, or three have only y intercept. Is that true? Yeah, they all have one y intercept, right? Look at the if you look at your notes, the y intercept one, y intercept one, y intercept one. And what is it? It's the value of the constant. Describe the end behaviors related to the degree of a function. Okay, so we know that odd functions go like this or like that, and that even functions have to open up or down. Uh, here's turning points. Turning point, any point on the graph where the graph changes direction, blah, 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 right? So again, if you are reading through the book, you see something like this, you say, what is that? It's going to be right in the margin beside it, okay? Saying, this is what it is. This curve does not have any turning points. Okay, this just talks about degree of a function, which we talked about. And then everything ends with this summary, right? Key ideas. Okay, so key ideas, those are important, right? What do you need to know? Well, polynomial function in one variable's function contains only multiplication and addition with real number coefficients, whole number exponents, right? You got a three, two, you can't have a half, you can't have a negative exponent. Uh, two variables, like y equals or f of x equals. The degree is the greatest exponent, so you got a degree three, it's a cubic. The degree determines the shape, okay? So now you know this. Need to know, uh, those are the ideas, here's what you need to know. The graphs of the same degree have common characteristics, and they've summarized that in a chart for you. Here's a constant, a linear, quadratic, cubic. Here's the number of x-intercepts, right? Zero, unless it's on the line, one. Zero, one, or two, right? Depending on whether it opens down or is below, it's just touching zero, one, or two. And then one, two, or three. Odd ones have to have at least one turning point, and you can have as many turning points as your, or sorry, as many x-intercepts as your degree. So degree one has one. Degree two can have zero, one or two, and degree three, again, you can't have zero, right? Because you gotta keep in mind, we're starting down there and going up there. We have to go through the axis. Number of y-intercepts, everybody's got one. End behavior, uh, domain is always real. Range, constant, real, max or min, and uh, real. Again, all odds will be real. Number of turning points, one less, this is degree zero. There's not negative one of them, right? It's just a straight line. One less than the degree, one less than the degree. And here, again, we have to be able to go in the direction that we were originally going. So either we just keep going in that direction. If we turn once, it's not good enough. We'll be heading back down again, right? So we need to turn twice. And that's what you need to keep in mind. Okay, that's that.